Welcome inside Rogers Arena in Vancouver. The last game of the season for both the Oilers and the Canucks. The Canucks have home ice advantage in round one thanks to a Calgary loss earlier today. But tonight, though, is all about fan appreciation night here in Vancouver as one of the most loved players, Gino Ojic, will be celebrated. He spent parts of eight seasons in a Vancouver uniform. Three goals, one assist in 32 playoff games. But it was never about the points. It was about the fight and the heart of a lion. The voices you will hear after the ceremony and anthem are that of Jim Houston and Craig Simpson. But let's go down to ice level and PA announcer Al Murdoch. Portland curtain back. Now he finds Daniel to the side. Verbata DC scores. Daniel dishes off. Verbata scores. Here it comes. Score. This year's winner of the Cyclone Taylor Award, Radim Verbata. Congratulations, Ready. Our final award is the Pavel Burry Award, named appropriately after the most exciting player ever to wear a Canucks jersey. And this year's winner, Radim Verbata. Here's Danielson in front of Radim Verbata, who scores! Looking for the tip was made, Verbata scores! And here to present the Pavel Burry Award, a player whose robust personality captivated the crowd from his very first game. He played with courage, heart, and determination every shift. Pavel's best friend, please welcome Gino Ojek. Tonight's starting lineup for the visiting Edmonton Oilers. In goal, number 30, Ben Scrivens. On defense, number 19, Justin Schultz. Also on defense, number 84, Oscar Kleppbaum. On left wing, number 16, Teddy Purcell. On right wing, number 10, Neil Yakupov. And at center, number 8, Derek Roy. Starting lineup for your Vancouver Canucks, delivered by Pizza Hut. Starting at goal, number 30, Ryan Miller. On defense, number six, Yannick Weber. Also on defense, number 18, Ryan Stanton. On left wing, number 22, Daniel City. At center, number 33, Henrik City. And on right wing, number 14, Alex Burrows. Thank you to Save on Foods for making every kid's dream possible. Please join us in welcoming 10-year-old Tyler Grimon from 100 Mile House Minor Hockey to tonight's starting lineup. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please rise, remove your hats, and join Coastal Salish singer Faith Sparrow Crawford from the Musqueam First Nation in the singing of O Canada. O Canada, 
our home and native land true patriot love in all thy sons command with glowing hearts we see thee rise the true north strong and free from far and wide oh canada we stand on guard for thee god keep our land glorious and free Welcome to the West Coast and game number 1230 of the National Hockey League schedule, the final regular season game, uh, and not much at stake at this point, a couple of first round matchups. In goal tonight, uh, no offense, but I think we all wanted to see Lauren Brassard, especially in his hometown, but he's been sent back to Oklahoma City, and Ben Scrivens gets the start with Victor Faust as his backup. Brassard, who played so well against San Jose, he was called up on an emergency basis. And Eddie Lack has carried Vancouver into the playoffs, but Ryan Miller has been hurt, needs a game, and this is a big opportunity for Ryan to get back into game action before the playoffs start. Vancouver Canucks know they will open at home, probably on Wednesday night. The Edmonton Oilers know they're going home, and game number 1230 on the NHL schedule is underway. The Sedins are in the lineup. Vancouver doesn't have a lot of extra players, as Yannick Weber comes in with a shot. So they can't rest a whole bunch of guys tonight. Dan Hanhuis does get the evening off. Neil Yakupov to center for Teddy Purcell on this line with Derek Roy and a bouncing puck. Ryan Stanton gets in for Dan Hanhuis. And number 18 has the puck and moves it ahead. Henrik to Daniel Sabine and he'll drop the puck off. Henrik on the outside and a long shot by Chris Tanev is handled by Ben Scribbins and he stops play for the first time. That's one thing you'll see a lot of in this game for the Vancouver Canucks, the offensive play of Daniel and Henrik Sedin. Everyone talking about the year that they've had. They've rebounded after a disappointing one under John Tortorella last year. And Jim, I thought down the stretch when the Canucks needed valuable points, especially against Los Angeles, the Sedin showed that they're still at the top level of their game. We welcome the viewers of CBC's Hockey Night in Canada, who just joined us on the West Coast. Jim Houston and Craig Simpson with Cassie Campbell-Pascal and game number 1230. The final one of the NHL schedule is underway. Vancouver knows it will open at home against Calgary in the middle of the week. Edmonton is finished, so nothing at stake here tonight in this final game because of the Winnipeg win today against Calgary. It eliminated the possibility of the Flames getting home ice. Centering pass here in a bouncing puck. Yannick Hansen moves it outside the line, and Taylor Hall, who's playing center ice again in the absence of Ryan Nugent Hopkins, to Jordan Everly, and the Oilers dump the puck in and start a change. Kevin Bieksa is in the lineup, and the veteran defenseman moves through center. Here's Radham for A great pass. Ben Berchi is number 47 in on the left wing, with Nick Benino on this forward line, as Berchi gets a chance to play with some pretty good players here tonight. Tyler Pippen over the blue line was stripped of the puck. Berchi, a former flame, takes over for Bata. Justin the team awards named as the most valuable player this season, and what a pickup he was in a two-year free agent contract. Verbata sits one through to the net, and it didn't quite get through. Back the other way comes number 15 for Edmonton, Tyler Pitlick, and he dumps the puck in. Both teams make changes here. Two minutes into the first period in Vancouver.
Luca Spiza, the brand new contract extension, started out of his own zone. Lyndon Bay is in here. Derek Dorsett, he also got a contract extension, is number 51. Brandon McMillan gets into the lineup tonight. And Sean Mathias is banged up and takes another night off, and there's another icing call against Edmonton. And Todd Nelson, what will his future hold? Yeah, a lot of interesting conversation on that. And, and Jim, I don't expect anything to happen right away. And maybe Craig McTavish will have something to say about that in the first intermission as he meets with Cassie Campbell Pascal. But I think a nice job Todd Nelson's been able to do. But some interesting scenarios will play out as this season ends and coaches become available you're right there's a lot of really good coaches that could be available well boston just got knocked out tonight and that brings to mind <laughs> well julian who knows what's going to happen there what if st louis goes out early could ken hitchcock go back to edmonton and san jose not making the playoffs you wonder if there's a change there so uh, no anxious moments for todd dorset holds the puck in for linden bay oilers get a hold of the puck and Derek Roy is out to center. As Rob Klinkhammer gets the puck deep. Chris Tanev is back. He tried to clear the puck out of his own zone and hit a stick. Alex Burrows can't gain any headway through center. Here's Teddy Purcell with a shot. And Ryan Miller makes his first save. Injured on the 22nd of February. And the Canucks didn't miss a beat with Eddie Lack in goal. And Miller just now back in. Been practicing this week. This is a pretty important game to get him back in game action before the playoffs where Eddie Lack most assuredly will start, won't he? I can't imagine a scenario where he doesn't, but without question this is an important warm-up for Miller, and you gotta think at some point he might get in. Uh, he's definitely the goaltender that was brought in to be the playoff guy, but the way things have gone, I, I think you have to go with Eddie Lack to start. All of the goodwill that has been forged in this city by the Vancouver Canucks this season would go out the window the very popular Eddie Lack didn't start the playoffs. Here's Taylor Hall. Back hands the puck into the corner. Benoit Puglia, Eberle out front. And a good defensive play by Ronnie Kennens, who moved the puck along the boards and out. Probably see a lot of Ronnie Kennens tonight. And Bo Horvat and Yannick Hansen can't sit the Sedins tonight, but you can sit them on the bench a little bit and Absolutely. not play them a lot. I think you'll see a lot of Hall and Everly that line going up against them as well. Here's Bo Horvat with a nice shot and a nice save by Ben Scrivens, an important early one. See a lot of Bo Horvat tonight. Number 53 has had a great rookie season, now just 20 years old. The Canucks' best face-off man. And he's been very good on this line with Kennens on his left side and Hanson on the right. And it's all really an audition, isn't it, until playoff time. The game changes so much, the intensity level and the strides that he's made as a young centerman this year will really be interesting to watch as the intensity ramps up against Calgary. A lot of experience on this Vancouver team in the playoffs, but none of it for Horvat and Kennens, and they'll see in a hurry how the playoffs change the way the game is played. Cleft bomb with a shot, a nice tip and a nice save, and another one for Ryan Miller as the Oilers come close. Here's Pitlick. From the blue line, Miller makes the save, and Tanev gets the rebound. Well, Miller took a long time getting up on that one. If there was any question about the stability of that knee, he's shaking it right now. The right knee is where he was injured, and he's flexing it as the play comes up the ice. And Jim, I think it was the second save. The first one was a great athletic save off of the tip. But the second one, he had to really anchor that right side, and he was up a little bit slowly and shaking it off. But he looks okay now as he comes out to play the puck on a line change. The Canucks have a little time, a delayed offside, so the Oilers tag up. Kevin Bieksa starts out. Here's Alex Edler to center. A long shoot-in for Vancouver, and Scrivens will come out and play the puck, and he just gave it away along the boards to Sven Berchi. Into the middle, Dorsett couldn't take the pass. Bay held the puck in. Berchi can't get a shot away, but he controlled the puck into the middle. Luca Spiza jumped in, and he beads the puck around the boards. Luke Gazdick up against Bieksa. Got the puck along the boards, and the owners were able to clear it as Lyndon Bay scoots back. He, too, will be into the playoffs for the first time. Didn't get a chance to play with the Los Angeles Kings in postseason. Brandon McMillan. Derek Dorsett, a bouncing puck. He couldn't control it. Eric Roy, he's found some chemistry with Neil Yakupov, who's been after the puck. Teddy Purcell is the left winger on this line that attacks for Edmonton. Orders. Martin Marinson held the puck in. Yakupov into the slot. Roy with a shot that is blocked. 
There's Berenson with a shot that went just wide of the net. Holding the puck in on the other side is David Seal. He's number 87. Good early pressure here by the Oilers. The best chance is coming on the last couple of shifts. And then every player in these types of games says, let's just get the game going and don't have any whistles. Well, they're really playing it out here, aren't they? Jordan Everly, David Musial, Frank's son, in his fifth National Hockey League game to Jordan Everly. He comes down the wing and feeds the puck into the middle of an off the stick of Edler to Ryan Miller. And he'll stop play. Those of you watching Sportsnet will go to Sportsnet Central. CBC viewers, Hockey Night in Canada continues in just a moment as Ryan Miller makes a couple of big saves to show that he's back. Absolutely, and watch his athleticism there. Made the first good save, second one. He was a little slow to get up and come back across. He's had plenty of time to shake it off and looks no worse for wear. He's got to feel good to get back in the net. Nothing like playing a game compared to the boring time of practice. Nothing like playing a game against a team you've never lost to either. 11-0 for Miller against Edmonton. And Edmonton will be loose here too. Last game for them. Disappointing season, but they'll take their chances and try to push their game offensively. Already six shots on goal. These last few years when the orders have been a little bit lean, the Sedins have just feasted on them as well. 155 points for the Twins in their career against Edmonton. They just left the ice after a short shift. Taylor Hall centering pass to the blue line. Cleft bomb shot and another save for Miller. Uh, the seventh Oilers shot on goal to two for Vancouver. And the Oilers have used their points pretty effectively here and got some good chances off of it. Once again, Clef Bond had his head up, looked in front, had some traffic in front of Ryan Miller. And to his credit, Miller early on able to hold on, battle through, and able to find that puck. And the Clef Bomb shot, he's number 84. It's an interesting defense for the Oilers tonight. Not much experience. Most of them wear numbers in the 80s. And ironically, you can't call them the 80s defense because five <laughs> of the six were born in the 90s. I don't think he ever would have written those names down at the beginning of the year and expected them to be in the lineup right now. Ronnie Kennans with a shot that went wide of the net. Here's Bo Horvath. Keith Ollie, a grizzled old veteran on the blue line. There's a hot shot that didn't get through from Lucas Spisa. And Anton Lander gets out to center. Matt Fraser stops up. He's got Tyler Pitlick with him. His centering pass is blocked by Kevin Bieksa. Off the blue line, David Musil tried to cut to the net, but he couldn't take the puck with him, and the Canucks are able to clear the puck to center. Awaiting its arrival is Matt Fraser. Martin Marinson feeds the puck to Fraser, who parks behind the net while his teammates finish a change. Verbata intercepted a clearing attempt. Sven Berchi knocked the puck out of the air. Nick Benino. Berchi in for Chris Higgins. Benino centering pass, and the puck is knocked away by Matt Fraser, who takes over. So I'm sure they went around the Canuck room today and figured out who had the biggest bruises, the most bruises, yeah. and who, who most needed a night off. Dan Hamhuis and Chris Higgins got the nod. Yeah, a couple guys who have dealt with little injuries. Obviously, Hamhuis missing an extended period of time. Jim, you mentioned the Oilers' defense, and in a year that's all about development, it's really been the young players getting a chance. You look at the experience, not a whole lot of it in those bottom four. And you look ahead to next year, you can't help but think a young player like Darnell Nurse will get a heck of a chance to start the season as well. But Justin Schultz, the one with the most games out of that group. Bouncing puck off the draw, Neil Yakupov gets a hold of it. Brandon Davidson, another young defenseman, lost control of the puck on the boards, but Derek Roy gets the puck out to center. Bobbling the puck is Lyndon Bay. Roy's in a long, Yakupov scores! Brilliant pass from Derek Roy after a Vancouver turnover, and Ryan Miller is beaten for the first time, 1-0 Oilers. Well, ever since Derek Roy came to the Edmonton Oilers, there was instant chemistry with Yakupov and he. And Yakupov... He almost knew that puck was coming. This is one for Lyndon Bay that got to get control of, lost it, then lost the battle. But what patience by Derek Roy. Hard to fault Ryan Miller on that one. But Yakupov, knowing that he's going to get the puck, just gets himself in ready mode. He's got his stick down. He's hunting the puck. Got his knees bent and makes no mistake. 
The early turnover gives the Oilers a 1-0 lead. That's important for Yakubov to have a decent finish here to the season. And find somebody to play with. Here's Eberle is a great shooter and he makes it 2 to nothing. And the Oilers, clearly the more spirited team in a mean-nothing game, have a 2 to nothing lead as Jordan Eberle gets goal number 24. And, you know, it, it means nothing to some of the Vancouver Canucks, but not to that man. This is a game for Ryan Miller that he wants to get comfortable, wants to get a feel. But the white sweaters get in early. That's a bad route taken by Tanev. He gets knocked off the puck. And one quick pass, one of the hot Edmonton Oilers has been Jordan Eberle, a slow start. And the Oilers in the mode of finishing this season off. Two quick goals. And that one, not much chance for Miller either as the quick release went up and under the bar. 11 seconds apart. Goals by Yakupov and Eberle. And it's a 2-0 lead. Here comes Jordan Eberle again with Taylor Hall who turns and shoots. And that's not a bad idea after the last one went in from there. And Ryan Miller makes the save. Yakupov's 14th, Eberle's 24th, 11 seconds of Two to nothing on Hockey Night in Canada, Edmonton leading. Let's bring in Cassie Campbell Pascal. Well, thanks, Jim. You guys were talking earlier about Todd Nelson, and he and Craig McTavish have not yet even spoken about a contract. When I talked to him this morning, I did ask him, hey, what if you're offered the associate coaching position? And he looked at me, paused a little bit, and he said, you know, it's definitely something I'd have to think about. And he said it would all depend on the chemistry with the new guy coming in. Jim? There are some very experienced coaches that are available, and maybe that would be a perfect learning scenario for Todd Nelson. We'll show you in a minute why they were all giggling. <laughs> why they were loose on the. There well, was that, a bit of a pratfall down there. <laughs> it's a pretty loose bunch right now, yeah. uh, you can tell, especially with the two goal early lead. Brandon Davidson, Lethbridge native, who played in Olds. Regina moves the puck around the boards. Anton Lander to center. Matt Fraser has Ollie coming in late, but Fraser bobbled the puck and put a teammate offside, and it was Fraser who fell trying to get over the bench, and that's why everybody on the bench was giggling. Yeah, this is one of those moments where you can't help but have a little bit of a chuckle as they're doing the best efforts of getting on, and <laughs> the team in front of them has a little chuckle. Todd Nelson hasn't had a whole lot to laugh about this season but that's one that they can have a little late moment here's nick benino got away from roy moves to the net can't beat scrivens there'll be a penalty on the play edmonton will be penalized as vancouver's radham verbata try to centering pass the orders get a hold of the puck and roy who had benino get behind him will get the penalty for hooking well the one thing you'll have in a game like this is some loose play and you see it in the neutral zone an aggressive pinch by David Musil there, and just a little bit late. You can see Benino did a nice job of getting the puck loose. Once you lose body position like that, there's no chance for Roy to avoid taking the penalty. And Jim, to me, Nick Benino is a really important player coming into the playoffs to see how he will handle in that number two role against Calgary. Had a great start to the season, has had a pretty good finish, had a long dry spell in the middle. Vancouver's power play has really come alive and they made a switch in Phoenix in the middle of March. Yannick Weber joined the power play and he just shot there and was blocked. Edler's on the left side. They moved Radham Verbata up front with the Sedins and put Edler and the right-handed shooting Weber at the blue line. As Edler moves in, he's stopped by Scribbins. Since they put this power play together, they've gone 37 percent. Verbata's shot was tipped out of play by Teddy Purcell. And to me, there's those two levels of right-handed shots with Weber's presence on the back end. He, he started to find his way offensively, had two goals in the power play against Arizona, and that's why. He's got a big, heavy shot. But if you focus on that shot, you've got Rabin Verbata on the other side, and he's got a great opportunity to get that one-timer down low. And so I think it's a good double threat that Vancouver's worked very well. well. We didn't waste any time tonight going to the second power play unit. And, uh, and again on a night when the Sedins probably won't play by the looks of things more than about 12 or 13 minutes. I was very much like that against Arizona when they got the lead. He was able to dial down their minutes and why not? You know what you're going to get from them come playoff time. Let's just get through this game without an injury and get other guys some ice time. Benino Burrows and Berchi up front. Chris Tanev. And Kevin Bieksa, normally Dan Hamhue should be on this second power play unit. Tanev 
Turned away from Pouliot, fed the puck down low. In the corner, Alex Burrows on his 34th birthday to the blue line in Bieksa. Tanev. Benino's at the side of the net, takes the pass, tried to throw it in front of the back door play, and the puck is underneath Keith Olley. Well, the one thing with the young Oilers team, especially on the back end, Jim, the killing penalties are so difficult. The reads that defensemen have to make, and this one is a good aggressive one by Ollie. Look, no hesitation at all. He doesn't allow Benino any time and space to walk out from under him. But the Oilers just two for six killing off in their last four games. 33%, they've been on a little bit of a tough stretch. 29th, second last in penalty killing overall in the NHL. As this season winds down tonight, it'll be the fewest number of power play goals scored in the NHL in the last half dozen seasons. Also the fewest number of power plays overall and opportunities. Weber, and some of that has to do with great penalty killing all around the league. The Sedins work around the outside. That's Henrik with the puck. Daniels on the inboards. for bat in front is one-timer. Henrik's got to him, and he didn't get much on it. Edler, cross ice pass. Penalty's over. Yannick Weber. Henrik Sedin. In comes Alex Edler. Side of the net. What a goal. Daniel Sedin from Alex Edler. And the Canucks get one back. Well, it's not a power play goal, but it might as well have been. It's just their ability to set up and find each other. It sets different levels of threat as Daniel Sabine down low at first comes kicking around. And when he goes to the one side, he's left wide open, but it's Edler reading it perfectly coming in. Gets the lane from the point. No one there to get it. And Musil can't get his stick down. Edler knew exactly where he wanted to put it. Daniel Sabin at the side of the net, as you always find the goal scorer much like the Yakupov goal, just in a position, get ready, stick on the ice, and no chance for scrimmage. I know it's not a big deal for the Sedins, but for Daniel, that's his 20th goal of the season, the eighth time he's got to the 20 goal mark. You know, you never want to think about the individual accomplishments, but at the end of the day, it's pretty gratifying to get to that number again. And a year that it didn't look like his goal scoring was going to be up, his points have been there, though, Jim. First time in four years, too, for him. Edler set him up. Henrik and Daniel are both in the top 20 in scoring. There's a shot by Pouliot that goes wide of the net. Pouliot with 18 goals, a career high. He's looking to get to the 20 with one game left as well. He had a good chance there. There's a chance for Taylor Hall and a good stick by Bo Horvat sliding through the crease to poke the puck away. Cannons tips the puck out and the friendly competition that is always there between the Sabine twins. Daniel has a chance to finish ahead of Henrik in the scoring race, and that doesn't always happen. Peter Mansbridge has an interview with Montreal Canadian star goalie and NHL MVP candidate Carey Price. Watch the national Peter Carey Monday at 10 on CBC. And going into the playoff, Jim, both Sedins have four game point streaks. So it's like everything. You want to feel good and you want to feel confident coming into the postseason. I thought they were tremendous in the Tuesday important game against Los Angeles here all through the game. Yeah, I thought especially when they needed that tying goal, they were able to push. And I think everybody looking to say, okay, have they lost a bit of their step? Are they as effective offensively and that was to me a good message sending game where they were able to still put this team on their backs and come up with a goal when they needed it and they had pretty good defensemen from Los Angeles spinning in circles trying to deal with their cycle and you know against Calgary you're gonna have to play at a really high pace and that'll really force them to get their feet moving and should be a heck of a good matchup first round I really think it's a pick and series it absolutely is this is the intrigue with the goaltenders. Calgary with an injury to Harry Ramo, who's played so well. Hiller's going to be the guy. We have to figure that Eddie Lack, as we've mentioned a couple of times already, is going to get that call for the first game. But you've got Ryan Miller looking over his shoulder as well. Both teams change on the fly here in a 2-1 game. The order's leading as Nick Benino dumps the puck in. Sven Berchi in four checking. 
Derek Roy starts out with Jakupov. Teddy Purcell over on the left side. Moves in on Yannick Weber. Weber's really stepped up this season. It's an important one for him, and he started this play. And Berchi was trying to finish it and couldn't do it. But he might get another chance. Here's Benino with Berchi. They're two on two. Berchi heads for the net. Up late comes Verbata. The pass didn't get through. And the second try didn't either. And the Oilers start out. Yakupov to center. Purcell. Just gets the puck deep. He wants to change here. Lots of continuous action late in the first period. Oilers with two goals in 11 seconds to take the lead. And Daniel Sedin with his 20th got one back. And here's Daniel again. Considers his options. Henrik is always his first, and he gave him the puck. Lander knocked the puck away, and there's going to be a penalty called up from center ice, and it's going to be Anton Lander that will get the penalty for tripping Henrik Sedin. So the Sedins will go back to the power play when we come back on Hockey Night in Canada. What a spectacular finish for Jamie Benn in honor of his home rink in North Saanich winning Kraft Hockeyville. And another BC boy wins a big championship, a scoring championship for the NHL. That's amazing, isn't it? I don't know if anyone would have picked that to start the year either. Vancouver's on the power play. Lander is off for tripping Henrik Sedin. Second power play of the game for Vancouver. Verbata. As Daniel parked in front of the net, the cross-ice pass to Weber. Edler feeds it back. Henrik takes over. Daniel. Here's Weber with his shot along the ice. He just missed the net. Didn't load up the big slapper. Right here, though. Yeah, he's looking past. Weber defers to Henrik Sedin. Into the middle, Verbata gives the puck back. Daniel, back door for Edler, trying to return the favor, but the pass didn't get through. David Musil blocked it. Yannick Weber held the puck in so the penalty killers can't change. Henry, minute into the power play, Weber. Alex Edler walks in, makes the pass. Henrik to Weber, his shot blocked fearlessly by Matt Hendricks, and that hurt Verbata. Here's Yannick Weber again. Verbata leans into one, broke his stick. Edler got the puck into Henrik Sedin. What possession here on the power play. The Oilers can't get a hold of the puck, and their penalty killers have been there for a while. Weber, Henrik, Weber again, kicked the puck, couldn't control it. Purcell's stick was lifted, but the puck came to Musil, and he's dead tired trying to get off, and he can't because the puck didn't get by center. Henrik comes back in, Daniel. Burrows gives Daniel the puck. He'll play it off to Henrik, to Daniel. A little more magic. Now the Sedins are tired. Taylor Hall killing the penalty. Turned back by Bieksa. Will they stay even longer? Well, the Sedins are going to change as Alex Burroughs plays the puck back. But that was a minute and 58 seconds of possession of the puck on a power play. And the hallmark of a good power play is good quick puck movement and players and bodies and I, what i liked about the fact is it wasn't a static looking power play at times when they faltered jim i thought they had been too predictable but here lots of player movement they got the one shot from weber and hendrix puts his body in harm's way but you're right that was a very mobile fluid power play with good player movement and puck movement all the way through the, the zone they're not going to keep their ice time down if they play two yeah, minutes in every power exactly. play tonight and it won't bother them Took a while for Vancouver to get into this game, but they've taken it over. There's Alex Burrows. Two power plays. They haven't had many shots, just five, but it's been a while since the Oilers have been into the attacking zone. They take two penalties on the road, and yeah, the Oilers' offensive game was got in on a couple of good four checks, turned pucks over. They've been having to defend far too much. Purcell met at the line and checked. And Brandon McMillan met him. Long pass for Yakupov with some speed. Teddy Purcell dropped the puck back. Davidson with a shot. That's blocked. And the Canucks get possession. Lyndon Bay flips the puck to center. McMillan rushed onto it. Here comes Chris Tanev, and his stick abandoned him. Now already tonight, I think I've seen three or four broken sticks, and most of them off of hard shots that have hit the player's stick. It happened to Edler on the point of the power play, and he had to leave a puck and go back to the bench. Ryan Stanton. 
Yannick Weber back out on the ice. Got the puck back off the boards and threw it in front of the net. Kinnons is stopped by Ben Scrivens. Puck rattled around like a pinball and Kinnons got a chance on Scrivens. Peter Mansbridge spends some time with Canadian star goalie Carey Price. Watch the National with Peter and Carey Monday at 10 on CBC. Well, you've mentioned the fact that Weber really involved in the offense here again. He jumps down, throws it to the front of the net, and Kennens just couldn't get a lot on it, and Scriven's able to find it through traffic and hold on. Yannick had pretty much lost his way in the NHL for a while, but he's found a home here, and he's been very good in a pair with Dan Hanhuis. He's played three playoff games with Montreal. That's not much experience. But you can see what confidence has done for him in the first period here tonight. First period that is over. 10 to 6 for the shots in favor of Edmonton. They scored goals 11 seconds apart. Daniel Sedin got one back. It's a 2 1 lead for the Oilers on Hockey Night in Canada on CBC. The board 2 0 Anaheim over Arizona, so they'll get the Winnipeg Jets in the first round. Let's go back to Jim. Next. Thank you, George. Vancouver and Edmonton for the second period, a 2-1 lead on goals by Yakupov and Everly for Edmonton, and Daniel Sedin has scored for Vancouver. The Canucks had a couple of power plays. They failed to score on them, but the Daniel Sedin goal came seconds after the first penalty had expired. Teddy Purcell chasing the puck. It's poked away from him. Adam Verbata at center. Long pass for Ryan Stanton. Sven Berchi, number 47, in against Justin Schultz. Cleft bomb is there as well. Berchi's centering pass is gobbled up by the previously mentioned Derek Roy, who's out on this line with Teddy Purcell and Neil Yakupov. Yannick Weber. Tape to tape pass. Nick Benino passes off. Verbata takes the shot. A deflection bounced in front of the net after Scrivens made a nice save. A tricky save on a deflection of Verbata's shot. Schultz. Wink wide, Pouliot's there. Tanev tried to stand up on him. Chris Tanev's brother, Brandon Tanev, scored the game-winning goal tonight to win an NCAA championship for the Providence Friars over Boston University. Here's Jordan Everly dangling towards the net. Pouliot. Taylor Hall. His pass to Martin Marinson. He might get another chance here as the first attempt to pass the puck was blocked. Former Prince George Cougar to Taylor Hall. Everly a preoccupation for Ryan Miller in front of the net. And the orders give the Canucks a break here as they change, so there's some time and space for Tanev to get out. Long pass bounced off the stick of Marinson. Tyler Pittman. Alex Edler blocked his shot. Ronnie Kennan's in the middle of the ice. Here's Lyndon Bay driving wide, kept wide by Brandon Davidson. Derek Dorsett. To the blue line, Spiza's shot rattles around in front after it was blocked by Davidson. Kevin Bieksa has the puck. And a bouncing puck for Bieksa, and he throws it to the blue line. Keith Ollie is there to try and hold it in, can't quite do it. Bay trying to race onto the puck. He gets a hold of it. Looking for an outlet. He's got BX heading to the net, and he just couldn't handle the pass. His wraparound. He scores. Wanted to score on the first try, but he missed his shot, did the wraparound, and it's a 2-2 tie. Once again, the stop up by Bay and just buying some time looking for the D. It's been a common theme all night for the Canucks. The D coming up and getting involved in a play. Good cross seam pass. A very lively end boards. And you can see Scrivens overplayed it to his left. Wasn't quite sure where the puck was. And for his first goal in 27 games, Kevin Bieksa, much like Dan Hamhuis the other night, he had gone 69 without scoring and had a good feel about it. Kevin Bieksa gets a little snack on the bench. <laughs> he looks like obviously didn't have a pregame meal. Right? You don't see that every day. Score a goal and have a snicker. Kevin Bieksa's fourth of the season at 2.15 of the second period. One of the areas the Canucks don't get a lot of is uh, scoring from their defense. They have been able to spread it around their forwards, though. They have a dozen players with 10 or more goals in their roster. And what will be interesting, Jim, is the Calgary Flames get a lot from the defense, but also have 11 players with 10 or more. 
so it'll be a good balance act there. But the Vancouver D does get involved in the play. They might not score, but much like the play Edler made on the first goal. Back the other way, Derek Roy with a tip that went up over the net. A collision between two young defensemen. Marinson and New Seal banged into each other and they both fell down. They're back up now and defending. Sven Berchi to center. Kravat off the wing to the net. He wanted Berchi to get that and he couldn't. Benino to the blue line. Handler quickly over to Chris Tanev. He shoots and that's blocked partially by Taylor Hall and sent wide of the net. Now Hall takes over and tries to get out. He's turned back by Alex Edler. The assist on the goal by the exit at 2.15 of the second period to Lyndon Bay and Brandon McMillan. Here's Jordan Everly into the middle and a shot blocked as Pouliots couldn't get to the puck to the net. Well, it was a little sleepy start for the Vancouver Canucks in the first period, but here to start the second, nice job of getting on the play. Watch the effort by Scrivens as he comes across and he overslides. Mm -hmm. It's a beginning of a period, a little bit of a wet bench, and the Vancouver Canucks tie the game up on a nice play by BX. There's a chance for Hall and he scores. Right off the draw and a pass from Benoit Pouliot. The Oilers have the lead again as Taylor Hall has scored number 14. And just like that, the, the face-offs were owned in the first period by the Edmonton Oilers, and Taylor Hall wins that, and to his credit, beats his man to the front of the net. That's Bo Horvat's man. And Horvat gets caught watching, Hall gets inside, and what a nifty play by Benoit Pouliot. No hesitation by Pouliot. Inside route, Pouliot coming from the boards, he gets lost, and a no-look turnaround pass and an easy tap in for Taylor Hall. Good execution, though, off the one draw. The second assist for Oscar Kleffbaum, young Swedish defenseman. Here's where the Oilers lead again. Danik Hansen starts a breakout. Kevin Bieksa up on the play, dumps the puck in. Kleffbaum is back. Worked his way along the boards and stayed with the puck. Kazdick to center is Rob Klinkhammer. Bounces the puck off the boards and his backhander went way wide of the net. Yannick Hansen is back for the puck. Lucas Spiza. Tip in for Kennens. Vancouver changing on the fly. Steve Ollie rattled hard against the boards by Brandon McMillan. Derek Dorsett advancing the puck. Got a slash in the back of the legs from Rob Klinkhammer and he turned around and had a look for the number. Stanton knocked the puck out of the air. He did it with a high stick and the play is stopped. Well, for Ryan Miller here in his first game back, it was a bit of a tough start with two quick goals. And here's another one that just couldn't quite control the rebound. And much like we saw in the first, look at how slowly he got up. He reached over with that right leg as he did in the first period on a very acrobatic save. So we'll continue to watch him as he gets himself back into game shape. I'm thinking the key day is tomorrow. How he feels the after. Day, yeah. How he feels after this game. He's really tested that knee. There's a penalty coming up here as a hooking call. The Edmonton Oilers are winning the draws here early on anyways. It got the last goal, the go-ahead goal, and here it creates a power play chance. Good execution, a puck snapped back to the point and Stanton just lost body position. You can see the body's going right to the next. Fraser was there battling for the loose puck and there's the stick of Stanton gets in on the hands of Fraser. 68% on the draws right now for the Edmonton Oilers. That's been a problem all season for Vancouver. Bo Horvat is their best center iceman. And he's 20 years old, 19 for most of the season. They've had a lot of nights where they've only won 35% of the faceoffs. And again, going into the playoffs, do you trust? Now, Willie Desjardins showed a huge amount of trust in Bo Horvat. As you know, it changes. Not having Kessler there is a big difference. Schultz with a shot. The Zoyner power play goes to work. It's 19th in the league, but one for its last 10. Vancouver shorthanded. Penalty killing has been excellent. One of the strengths of their team. Around the league, it's been terrific. You know, only a half a dozen years ago, there was one team in the NHL that gave up less than 50 power play goals in a season. There are 16 right now in the last day of the season that will give up fewer than 50 goals on a penalty to me, kill. To me, you go goaltending and coaching. I mean, the, the ability for teams to 
know exactly the tendency of their power plays and break it down on a penalty kill and just how good the goaltenders are. It's so difficult to score. Everybody's aggressive on the penalty kill. Now. Pressure, pressure. All I, I think that's been a big mind change. You know, 20 years ago, teams were much more passive. You thought of just a static box and try to keep them to the outside. Now they force you to make great plays under intense pressure. A lot more difficult to do that. Vancouver second in the league to Minnesota in penalty killing right now and doing a nice job here as the owners move the puck around. Yakupov, cleft bomb. Again, cleft with the bomb. And that's kicked aside by Ryan Miller with some traffic in front. Matt Hendricks, the preoccupation in front of the net. Pouliot over on the left side wants the puck. Yakupov sees Hendricks go back to the front of the net. A tip by Alex Hedder, but the puck still got to Derek Roy and his centering pass didn't get by Chris Tanev. And Edler clears the puck. You look at Stanley Cup championship teams over the last few years. They can get by without a good power play, but they don't get by without great penalty kill. Yeah, if you had a choice to pick one, you'd want to be a top two or three penalty killing team and hope that your five on five game works. Hard hit by Yannick Weber. And that kept Pitlick from cutting to the net. Good defensive play. The penalty is over. One shot for the Oilers on that power play, and they have a one-goal lead here as we near the midway mark of the second period. Weber meet Pitlick. No chance on goal. Welcome back to Vancouver, and Henrik Sedin assisted tonight on Daniel's goal. And speaking of assists, how about this? Alex Skiffington, all the way from Newfoundland, St. John's Newfoundland, with the help of Make-A-Wish, got his day with the Canucks. And what a day it was, as you can see. Met Ryan Miller sits between the Sedins. And how about this? Henrik Sedin gave him his 700th assist puck. What an honor for Alex. Jim? That's the kind of guys they are. They do an awful lot of work behind the scenes in Vancouver with Canuck Place, especially with children. Very giving players and members of the community now. And they're real Vancouverites. Their kids are. And they're on the ice here right now, and they're in a little trouble on a backdoor play for Benoit Pouliot as Hall tried to return the favor of the last goal, and they might get another chance as the Oilers are all over the Canucks right now. Pouliot again. Eberle's in front. Pass doesn't get by Henrik. He's struggling to get a hold of the puck, and a good shift here for Taylor Hall's line to the blue line. Marinson fakes. Passes off. Quick shot. They score. Pouliot from Marinson, and the Oilers have a two-goal lead. And you saw a very dejected, frustrated Ryan Miller. Not happy with that one, but this one's just effort. It's the Oilers line that's been so effective on the night. They scored the go-ahead goal earlier, and they were a couple of good chances early, and then just kept control of the puck. Taylor Hall, cross seam pass. Nice patience here, and this is a shot that just goes underneath the arm. You could see Miller moving across, got halfway and tried to close the elbow. And there's the reaction. It's been a frustrating start. Four goals now on 14 shots for Miller in his first game back. And while Pouliot with a nice night, he's up to 19 goals. He's got two assists to go with it. And Hall gets the second assist. Here's Bertschi with a shot. He scores! Ben Berchi picked up at the deadline in a deal with Calgary with a big smile on his face. His first is a Canuck to make it 4-3. And watch the hesitation by Berchi. He does a nice job of taking away the puck. Good give and go. And held on to it, which I thought maybe a little too long. He almost allowed Davidson to get back. There's the errant pass by Davidson. He's a little late getting that hesitation. And that's one that Ben Scrivens has to have. When you think of the frustrating year for the Edmonton Oilers goaltenders. Those are the kind of back-breaking goals that have just kill momentum, and it's done it yet again. So if anybody else has any milestones they want to get, they this might want to get to them tonight. This is the night. <laughs> There's a tip that ends up in the corner. A 4-3 Vancouver lead for Bata. Sets up Berchi. There's a hot shot by Brandon McMillan that didn't miss the net by much. Anton Lander to center with Fraser and Pitlick dumps the puck in. First man back is Kevin Bieksa. Luca Spiza there and center in support is Lyndon Vay. Luke Gazdick works the boards here. He's just come on the ice. Pitlick at the end of his shift. 
Got the puck in behind the net. Marinson with a good pinch kept the puck in. Hendricks for Gazdick. In comes Key Bali. Matt Hendricks protects the puck. Centering pass was tipped. Doesn't get out. Klinkhammer with his shot and Miller turned as though he was looking behind him as he made the save. Congratulations to North Saanich, British Columbia. Kraft Hockeyville 2015. Thank you to all those who participated. Brought to you by Kraft Dinner. Jim, you mentioned it, so let's have a look at it. Here's a shot through traffic. Rick Miller a little peek back and never a good sign. And this is a battle for Miller. Just got to dig in here and try to get your reps, try to get your confidence. And I don't see any scenario unless Ryan Miller gets hurt where you see Eddie Lack coming into this game. And Eddie, <laughs> no, you're absolutely right. And the same could be said about Eddie Lack starting in the playoffs. Edler with a shot that's blocked. I don't see a scenario where that not, doesn't happen. Yeah, absolutely. Here's Pouliot. Drop pass. Eberly cross ice and a good stick by Edler. And there's lots of open ice here right now as we near the midway mark of the second period in a 4-3 Edmonton game. And Jim, to me, that, that is an easy decision. You know, you know, at times when you're not making the emotional pick and you're not the one paying the players, it's easy to sit up here and make decisions. But with the way Willie Desjardins' team has played in the absence of Miller and lack the effort that he's put in, I just, I just don't see it's a no-brainer and a great option and a good payoff for Lack for the work he's done. Here's a Canuck breakout with Weber leading the way, but the orders turn that back in the neutral zone. Justin Schultz to Teddy Purcell. His pass is a bad one from right through the legs of Derek Roy. Stanton left the puck behind. Yakupov in front, misfired, and Roy just about set him up for another tap in. Schultz, Purcell shoots, that's blocked in front. Ryan Stanton got the block, and the Canucks get the puck to center. And once again, they get no further. Yakupov to Roy. And here's Neil Yakupov trying to get to his forehand. His pass out front comes right to Yannick Hansen. This is like a game in the 80s between the Oilers <laughs> and the Canucks. All kinds of chances, high scoring. The Oilers were usually in the lead in those ones, too. <laughs> and there's plenty of goals, that's for sure. Lander to center. Here's Matt Fraser. Tyler Pitlick. And Lander to the blue line. Brandon Davidson did a nice job to hold the puck in, and it's lost on the cross ice pass. Looking for Bata go. Random for Bata. Behind the net, his centering pass didn't get out front for Nick Benino, but what a wonderful burst of speed for Bata. And what a terrific pickup he's been. Bieksa with a shot that's blocked. Now it hurt Musa yeah. right on the top of the foot. And you can see again that Scriven's just overplaying on the one side. Had Verbata been able to get around, there was no goaltender in the net. And if, as Musil cobbles back, he did a nice job of blocking that one. And one thing Ben Scriven's watched the play here, the good speed by Verbata. Scriven's gets stuck on that side, gets a little bit of a bump with his defenseman, and a nice job coming across by David Musil to stop the first play and then makes another good play blocking that one with the top of his foot. Mark's got the draw, but Derek Dorsett couldn't get to the net. And Davidson bounces the puck along the boards and gets it to center. Lyndon Bay to Chris Tanev. Long shooting. Brandon Davidson is back under pressure from Derek Dorsett. Lander couldn't get the puck. McMillan did. Scrivens the save. Can't hold the puck. And he got a quick enough whistle here to stop the play as the puck came loose at the side of the net. 8 16 to go in the second period. The last goal from Sven Berchi to make it a 4 3 game. There's the Canucks MVP, Radim Verbatara, who's had a huge impact on the Canucks this year. He gave the Sedins their first right-handed winger who can score. He had 30-plus goals, 60-plus points for just the second time in his career and a big part of this playoff push. Above all that, though, Rabat is thrilled that the move to Vancouver has ignited 
the love of hockey for his son, Christoph, who in Arizona, the six-year-old had absolutely no interest. But since coming to Vancouver, he wants to take skating lessons and has a huge interest talking hockey with his dad post-games. Jim? Asks him who scores, and quite often, Dad said, me. me. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. And what versatility he's had on not just the Sedin line, and maybe as the playoffs go along, Jim, to get some of that secondary scoring. Maybe he can be the catalyst on another line if it's not going, and if the Sedins ever do drop off, you can reunite them and get yeah. them going. Lately, he's been with Benino and Higgins to try and get a second line going, but the other part of that is that Alex Burroughs has had such a resurgence yeah. this year that he's capable of going back with the Sedins. You'll always have that option to put Verbata back with them at some point. And as we mentioned on the power play, he's such a good double threat with that extra right-hander playing off the left-handed Sedin. That's the hardest hit of the game, and it's Dorset just decked by Keith Allen. Look at Dorset jump back up, and make sure he shows he's all right. There's a beautiful save by Ben Scrivens. Is in with the shot was Brandon McMillan. And Matt Hendricks gets a hold of the puck, so there's no shortage of scoring chances at both ends as the puck climbs the glass and out of play. Tuesday night, it's the season finale of Mr. D. Will Jerry win Coach of the Year? Watch Tuesday night at 9.30 on CBC. Jim, another key acquisition for me is Derek Dorsett. And, you know, player who's played in the Stanley Cup Finals last year, and that's why the grittiness. He knew he was going to get hit. All he came in on a hard pinch. Dorsett bounced back up and made a play and got the puck out of the zone back the other way. There's your new age NHL enforcer. You got to be able to skate. You got to be able to make some plays under pressure. And as every coach will tell you, you got to earn the trust of your coach so you can play in your own zone. He's really earned the trust of his teammates because he'll defend any of them. He can score a little bit. You got to be able to kill penalties and you got to be able to play 10 or 12 minutes. And the, the big guys who just fight don't play anymore, but the Derek Dorsets on every team do. And speed. You know, when you can skate, and he, he can show that when you need a little bit of a momentum boost in a playoff game, he's got that ability to get the puck in deep and cause some damage. In the Stanley Cup run for the Rangers last year, playing on the fourth line with Dominic Moore and Big Brian Boyle, that was a very effective, effective line. Yeah. And just having that experience and going that deep into the playoffs and the pressure of with it, he can be a good source. Horvat with a good hit as the physical game has picked up here. Streaking down the wing is Neil Yakupov, and Spiza stayed right with him. So did Yannick Hansen. Good to see Yakupov moving his legs, though, there. Early on in the season, Jim, that wasn't a play that he would have made. He would have, too often, he was gliding and trying to hold on to the puck there. He got, did a good job of keeping his legs moving, and it was a nice response by Spiza to cut him off. There were too many nights where you didn't even notice that he was in the lineup. And that's not the case the last of the while. Derek Roy has some room, but he wants to go to Yakupov and back, and the shot went wide of the net. From the blue line, David Musil's shot, and that felled Kevin Bieksa, but he's back up the centering pass as the Canucks collapse to the net. He is gobbled up and dumped in by Benino, racing on with his Perci. Took a hard hit there from Brandon Davidson. He took a shot at him, but he kept going. Up the middle, here's Pitlick with a shot off the shoulder of Ryan Miller. There's wide open chances at both ends, and there's now a physical component in the game for the first time since that hit by Ollie. Well, keep an eye on Kevin BX, the two, Jimmy. He took that shot right in the back, looked like the back of an ankle, and he's still in some pain. I don't think he's having a chocolate bar this time. He's down on the bench in some pain. Might need something to bite on, though. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And you switch to jerky. <laughs> really big in. I gotta tell you, I think that's the first I've ever seen that one. Come right off the bench, scoring a goal and have yourself a bite to eat. You need a little energy. Here's a chance for a two-on-one. Linden Bay, good back check though. By Marinson as the defenseman got back to make it a two-on-two -two and nothing came of it for Vancouver. Linden Vay. This young Euler defense that we're seeing play tonight 
How many of the six do you think are on the team next season? I think Oscar Kleffbaum for sure. Yeah, I don't think there's any question that he's going to be a regular. Obviously, Schultz isn't going anywhere. The question, Marinson, potentially. That's probably it at that point. A deflection out of play. Kevin Bieksa in some pain after blocking his shot. He's also got a goal tonight on Hockey Night in Canada on CBC. Worst thing that can happen to a playoff bound team in a game like this is to have injuries and the Canucks get a couple of scares. And you can see it just it didn't hit the foot of BX so just above it and there's so many nerves in that area that you get a real stinger and you can see how painful that was for Kevin BX. Derek Dorsett absorbed that Keith Ollie hit but here Luke Gadstick gets him and look at how quickly he takes his hand off of his stick and that looks to me like a left shoulder as he went to the Vancouver Canucks bench. That's Damn. a big loss, as you said. Another emotional guy, energy guy. Well, he's gone not just to the bench, but right down the tunnel to the dressing room. And a hush came over the building. The Vancouver Canucks, the scoring material tonight. They will open the playoffs at home to Calgary midweek. Because of the way this building is booked for concerts, probably going to be Wednesday night. Probably has to be Wednesday, Friday. And that's not much of a turnaround as we bring Cassie in again. Thanks, Jim. We got to do a Budweiser red light scoreboard. And how about Mark Stone in Ottawa? Two goals as they beat Philadelphia 3-1 this afternoon. Just an amazing job by that young man. Winnipeg beats Calgary 5-1. Thus, uh, the Canucks have home ice advantage in round number one. A must win for Pittsburgh, and Brandon Sutter scores two. And we'll go back up to you, Jim. So Anaheim, you saw, is ahead of Arizona. If that holds, it'll be Anaheim, Winnipeg. That'll be a heck of a series. Oh, be a some, some bodies will be flying in that one, for sure. Either way, it was going to be a beauty, because it would have been another way. It would have been Winnipeg, St. Louis. I, I don't think there's anybody around the league who doesn't feel good that there's going to be a playoff game in Winnipeg. It's such a great building to be in and a good story year. I feel like how everybody in Vancouver loves Eddie Lack. Everybody around the league loves the Jets. Even if you're not a hockey fan, you love the story of Winnipeg coming back in and finally getting playoffs again. Tuesday night, it's the season finale of Mr. D. Will Jerry win Coach of the Year? Watch Tuesday at 9.30 on CBC. And you have to think that if the long playoff run, unless you've got a guy that there is no other choice in goaltending, you're going to see maybe both. I agree with you. The fans want to see Eddie Lack, and he's deserved an opportunity to start. There's Ryan Miller catching the puck. There's the likable Eddie Lack. I can tell you, as a player, you, you love to have a quote unquote backup goaltender who's a good guy a guy that you can really relate to and when he was put into the limelight with Miller going down you see the numbers pretty respectable goals against average great save percentage and most importantly Jim able to keep the good times going for Vancouver and get them back into the playoffs last year's disappointment a distant memory for this group he got them 26 points down the stretch 40 points overall for the season and they just weren't making the playoffs after Ryan Miller got hurt on the 22nd of February if Lack didn't take over and play well. Kevin Bieksa looks as though his stinger has settled, but still no Derek Dorsett gone to the dressing room. Well, you mentioned physical series of Winnipeg Anaheim. I don't don't you think this Calgary Vancouver one should have some incredible battles as well. Uh, this Calgary team is going to be one that is going to be a handful for Vancouver and has played so well on the road the last half of the season too. Both teams have had excellent road records. Hansen with a shot up off the glass. Lyndon Vane. Lander starts the breakout here. Fraser to Pitlick. Calmly broken up by Chris Tanner. A centering pass that Matt Fraser can't get a hold of. And Alex Edner put the puck off the boards. Pitlick won't let it out. Norinson off the glass. Edler swatted the puck to center. 
Lyndon Vey. Tanev tipped the puck through, but there was nobody there on the right wing, and the Oilers have a free pass to clear the puck. Ryan Stanton is back. As we watch Lyndon Vey there, Jim, you wonder whether Richardson will get himself healthy enough to get back into a, a roll. Tom Mathias also still out of the lineup there. That would, be a big, that would be a big difference maker, wouldn't it, for the balance and depth of this Vancouver team? Especially now for Jimmy along with Derek Dorsey. But Richardson is another center iceman, and it's a mystery. He came back and then left again. Uh, an injury that just doesn't heal and sort of seems unlikely now that he's going to be around, although it is that season where you have no clue. And yeah, nobody's going to tell you anything, that's for sure. Lies, damn lies is about injuries. That's all that's going on amongst the coaches right now. Yeah. There's a breakaway pass on a Vancouver change. Purcell stopped by Miller, but he scores on the rebound. Teddy Purcell sent in alone, and the Edmonton Oilers have a 5-3 lead. And, Jim, there's a reason why more goals are scored in the second period than any other, and it's because of the long change. And here, late, the last minute of play, you'd think maybe you could just last another 29 seconds. Instead, look at the mass of bodies by the Vancouver Canucks. Sloppy change. Miller left all alone and a nice job of Purcell coming in and finding that rebound and Miller lost his footing wasn't able to stand up at the top of his crease and Teddy Purcell found the rebound put it underneath him. There's 12th from David Musial at 1930 and a two goal Edmonton lead. And David Musial already two points in his young career. A pretty good start. Yeah, he wasn't a big not point that, guy. No, he definitely wasn't a point guy. But I think he had more than two. And a penalty here as David Musil is going to take an interference call on Henrik Sedin. So just like that, the power play which got things going. I, I said it for his dad, so I'll say it once for him. As the coach looks at him go to the penalty box, he says, you picked a fine time to leave me, Musil. <laughs> All right. And that'll be the last. Okay. Well, here's the play as, as you know you get a little bit nervous when you've got protecting the front and it's just leg on leg as Henrik Sedin going backwards and with experience versus rookie you know you're going to get that call. The power play will carry over into the third period here as Yannick Weber goes back for the puck. And there'll be a minute and 51 seconds with which to work for the Vancouver Canucks on the power play to start the third period. Edmonton up by two, five to three, through two periods on Hockey Night in Canada on CBC from Vancouver. Welcome back to Vancouver. And on a night where the Canucks are appreciating their fans, they also appreciated and celebrated one of the favorite players of all time for the Vancouver Canucks, Gino Olczyk, and he actually presented Radim Verbata with the Pavel Burry Award. Of course, he and Pavel Burry were pretty much best friends throughout their playing career and still to this day, the entire team of the Vancouver Canucks came by, gave the handshakes, and throughout the building, you could hear the chant, Gino, Gino. Jim? And you're hearing it again right now because they just put another tribute on the video scoreboard to Gino. And everybody here is on their feet. Trevor Lyndon, the president of the team, played with Gino and Pavel. And the Canucks honored Gino, who's been fighting for his life, a very rare blood disease. But he's here tonight and seems in very good form, accepting the salute of the Vancouver Canucks and their fans. There's Gino. He was in his day one of the toughest he players <laughs> that ever played the game. Yeah, you knew if you're going into the corner with Gino, you, you better be wary. And there's going to be some physical contact, and the fans here obviously gravitated to him right off the bat and continue to today. But when you uh, saw the shot of the bench in the middle of it, you saw a shot of Derek Dorsett back on the Vancouver bench. Great sign, isn't it? Vancouver starts this third period on the power play. Trailing five to three, David Musil is in the penalty box, and Alex Hitler carries the puck to center. 
the drop back for Henrik Sedin to Daniel. That's the usual Vancouver entry. That over on the other side couldn't get the puck, nor could Yannick Weber. Ryan Miller in goal tonight has given up five on 20 shots as he works his way back into the lineup after being out since the 22nd of February. He's never lost a game to Edmonton. So he needs to come back up front tonight if he's going to keep that unblemished record intact. I'm not even sure if he would bother critiquing his no, game tonight. It's all about so. how he feels. Yeah, I think you want to get through it and get bumped around a bit and have to make athletic saves like he has and see how the knee holds up. And then get back to practice and get working on the mechanics of the game. Walking the line, Chris Tanev to Kevin Bieksa. His cross ice pass knocked down and played back to Tanev. Bieksa over for Benino. That was intercepted before it got through to him. And Marinson clears the puck down the ice for Edmonton. Kevin Bieksa. Sven Berchi. In on the left wing, pass back to the blue line, and Bieksa tried to return the favor, intercepted. And the puck is cleared by Oscar Kleffbaum. Another Swedish defenseman. There are now 20 of them in, in the National Hockey League, and they're usually calm, cool customers. Yeah, I think very similar traits when they excel at certain aspects of the game. It seems to be their poise, their ability to read the play well, and do things under pressure. They always seem to be thinkers of the game. Yeah. As you had a stretch of the Finnish factory for goaltenders, it's the Swedish factory for defensemen. There's Derek Dorsett back in action. Penalty's over. It's five on five again. Lyndon Bay with Brandon McMillan. Dorsett's out front. In comes Spiza. So Dorsett couldn't have been hurt very badly because you know on a night like this that he wouldn't have been allowed to come back in the game if they thought there was anything that might be aggravated for the playoffs. Much agreed. And like his typical game, he's always around the top areas of the ice, both in front of the net, take a hit to make a play like he did just prior to getting injured, and then the one that did seem to sting him. Right? Much like the play we saw at BX, you know, maybe it's just a little bit of a stinger. You get it sometimes a nerve shot that bothers you and he's still holding it there so it can't be anywhere near 100 percent but i would agree with you jim if there was question about whether he's going to do further damage i don't think he'd be in the rest of this game i guess keith ollie didn't get the memo that this is a no hitter <laughs> yeah no hitter no whistles and now we've already had a bit of both first period must have been one of the quickest ones we've had there's Taylor Hall with a shot blocked and a loose puck in front of the net. Pouliot has a three-point night and is looking for his fourth. Bo Horvath. It's another night where Vancouver has just been eaten up in the face-off circle, although I would caution that nobody should scout, even look at the, uh, the game sheet from this one yeah, of the stats. It's one that the coaches burn right afterwards. Yeah. I don't think they could take too much out of it, but it is a concern going forward. So you wonder if if Horvat could play a bigger role in the faceoff circle. He's been very good, especially defensively. Takes a lot of defensive zone faceoffs. It wasn't lost on anyone, I don't think, that on uh, Tuesday night when Los Angeles was here. 1-1 one, one tie, 15 seconds left in the third period. Who was on the ice but Bo Horvat, Yannick Hansen, and that night they had Dorset with them. I think that's been consistent with the coach's strategy all year, don't you? And part of being a head coach like Willie Desjardins has been where he's won in the American Hockey League and had to trust younger players that maybe didn't have the pedigree. I think he's taken that to here, and he's trusted those players to do what they have to do. And Henrik and Bonino have not been able to get over that 50% hunt, and Horvat has. And boy, Pete Bonino on that face off. Persol trying to clear the puck with some help from Derek Roy. Lucas Pisa. Sven Berchi, he's had some energy tonight. Kevin BX at there. She's gone to the front of the net. The pass didn't get there. It was blocked by Keith Alley. Tyler Pittman. His uncle Lance played in the NHL at defenseman with Florida and Ottawa. 
Tyler from Minneapolis. Canino with a breakaway pass couldn't thread the needle and get the puck through to Bravada. You mentioned Berchi though. There's another example. If you get an opportunity to get in the lineup, you, you know you're probably not playing to start the playoffs, but this is one where if you're a young player, you can make a real impact. Come in and show some of the things you can do. And what he does is offer offense. And and you know injuries are going to happen. That's just the reality of the grind of playoff hockey. So. As we said, this game not much of a game for a lot of these players. It's not that for Berchi. This has been a good one for him. Clink Hammer onto the wing. Hendricks with a shot that was tipped wide of the net. As Clink Hammer is slid into the boards as Gazdick battles here with Derek Dorsett. Lyndon Bay, the recipient of the puck. Hendricks and Weber battle back to the blue line. Marinson just got his shot towards the net. It went wide. Klinghammer tried to play the puck to the blue line, but it's come all the way down the ice. And back to collect it is Matt Hendricks. Martin Marinson. Gazdick couldn't tip the puck. Well, he must have. It's not an icing call as Chris Tanev gets back. Head up, trying to make a play. Stopped by Pouliot. And backed up by his partner Alex Edler. This is an excellent pair. I would think we'll see Alex Edler and Chris Tanev playing against Sean Monahan, Yuri Hoodler, Johnny Goodrow. Vancouver's closed the gap to one. Well, the aforementioned Bo Horvat in the right place at the right time, but Yannick Hansen. Nice job, good speed and hard to catch. This is an innocent looking play, just a regroup, but David Musil gets caught a little high. A lost battle by Everly, and a nice job coming around by Horvat right on the doorstep to Yannick Hansen. Horvat protects the puck extremely well, keeps his feet moving, never stops. Maybe a lucky bounce in front, but that was a hard fought play that Hansen on the doorstep puts five hole on Scrivens. Just boost the confidence again of a very important line for Vancouver. Corbett, Hansen, and Ronnie Kennens. Mentioned the speed of Cal Day and those lines. Really, to be able to skate like that line can is a real advantage, too. Hansen's now a veteran, so if he's playing on that line, he really knows how to play the game now. He's had a very consistent season, so you can play that line against anybody. Hansen has 16. Horvat and Edler got the assists. And again, I think the key there, Jim, too, is Horvat. Maybe early in his rookie season, wouldn't keep his feet moving like he did there. I think he's really learned to keep the speed, and it's been effective for him. Now the Canucks are looking for the tying goal. What's Scrivens doing? He was down on the ice. It's been an adventure in his crease all night, hasn't it? Dale Yakupov. Lifted the puck in the air and he threw it onto his own bench stopping play. That goal came at 5.56 of period number three. Hansen from Horvat and Edler on Hockey Night in Canada on CBC. Playoffs are back in Vancouver this spring and they'll start this week here. Calgary against Vancouver. There are the Western matchups with the Ducks win over Arizona tonight. It's Ducks and Jets, Blues and Wild, Predators, Blackhawks, Canucks and Flames, and you will be able to see every minute of every one of those games on CBC, Sportsnet, or a Rogers affiliate. I think some great matchups, really compelling stories. How about St. Louis? All the pressure on them to be a real competitive team going up against that team that, much like the Ottawa Senators in the East, Minnesota just continues to find a way to win. There's a tip and a nice save by Ryan Miller as Jordan Everly made the play towards the front of the net. Miller made one of his better saves of the night. And this line been the most dangerous of the Edmonton Oilers by far. And Pouliot shows his speed in the middle of the ice, goes to the net hard, and that's one that Everly couldn't quite get on the ice, just tried to throw it in the general direction, and a nifty little tip by Pouliot that Miller able to handle. Taylor Hall in the middle. Ryan Nugent Hopkins misses the last Edmonton game of the season as the Canucks go offside. Willie Desjardins went deep into the playoffs last year in the American Hockey League. He won the Calder Trophy, the Calder Cup, 
with the Texas Stars. Had some pretty good battles during the season with Todd Nelson and OK City. He's on the other bench. And it'll be really interesting to watch come playoff time uh, just how he handles the matching game. And, you know, Stanley Cup playoffs, you see some of the matchups that you don't want to get beat on. Willie's allowed this team, as, as you've mentioned many times, to let the young players like Horvat handle any kind of assignment. But this will be their first real Dex Cup. With a backhand shot from Linden Bay that didn't get through to the net. Taylor Hall blocked it. And Everly starts out to Benoit Pouliot. Defenseman Clefbaum trying to join the rush. And Tanev broke up the play and sent it back the other way. Bay racing after the puck against Pouliot. In comes Dorsett with a shot. Shoulder didn't let him down there. He took a pretty good hack at that. That's about the fifth shot David Musil has blocked as well. He goes hobbling back to the bench for about the third time tonight. He learned that from Dad, didn't he? Absolutely. Frank was classic at that. Hard to find a shooting lane on him. There's a pass for Brandon McMillan trying to get in behind the Oiler defense. All he comes at him as the pass comes out front. Hanson with a shot. Ripped it just high and wide. Poor bat on the backhander. He ran into his own teammate. He and McMillan both went down. He got run over by Hendricks, which started that whole pinball. Chain reaction. Yeah, absolutely. And here's Hendricks trying to get to the net, but the play is just offside. Now, players are predictable, and you know Hendricks, if he's around, he's going to take your body and not necessarily try for the puck. Horvat trying to buy himself some time. There's the first hit, and there's the takedown. As McMillan in front, battling with Ollie, he gets knocked from below. Lucas Spiza couldn't get out of his own zone. The Sedins are back on. Daniel and Henrik will both be in the top 20 in scoring for the fourth time in their careers. And for just the third time since they've been here, Daniel will have more points than Henrik. And how often is Henrik only a couple of goals behind Daniel, too? It doesn't always happen that way. It's usually the same. It's similar. It's amazing how eerily similar. And their long careers, their point production is just incredible. Alex Burroughs working with them on the right side in the corner. Tyler Pittman dumps the puck in against Ryan Stanton and turns to the bench on an Edmonton change as this game reaches the midway mark of the third period. Benino advances the puck. Ribbons up to play. Ollie cleared the puck. Ryan Stanton, Neil Yakupov is closing on him in a hurry. Verbata. Little tip to make the play. Here's a pass for Berchi. Breaking it off the wing. Scores! Second of the night for Sven Berchi. That's how you make an impression on your coach, and it's a tie game, 5-5. Well, second on the night, and it's only one away from his career high. He shows great speed and agility, and what I like about the play he makes is he initiates the contact. A good stretch pass, a little chip from Vervada to Benino, and then look how he initiates the contact on Musil. And that's one again, Scrivens, much like he was beat earlier on, late closing the five hole, stick not in position, backing up to his goal line. And just like that, it's a tie game. And Ryan Miller has a chance to keep that undefeated record against Edmonton intact. I just like the fact that you get a young player with an opportunity to make himself noticed in a game, a meaningless game for everybody but him. And Credit to him, he's one goal away from the hat trick. First time he's had two goals in a game. He had eight NHL goals in the Calgary Flames lineup before he came here. I listened to an interview of Sven Berchi on the day he was traded to the Vancouver Canucks, and you could tell that time had run out in Calgary, and he was absolutely thrilled that they brought him over here for a fresh start. Former first round pick has had a good night tonight. Back in Vancouver and in the upcoming week, Rogers Arena is going to be extremely busy. Of course, the Canucks in the playoffs against the Calgary Flames, but they also have three concerts coming up April 14th, 16th, and 18th. And although unofficial, it's likely that the game will start Wednesday 
with the Flames coming in and then probably Friday. Then there's a break there you can see between the 18th and the 2nd where there are no concerts. But Jim and Craig, if you're going to be doing this series, I could picture you guys going to a little Def Leppard. <laughs> oh, yeah. That would be about the only one on that list. I'd go see Eric Church. New kids on the block? No, not, not that, I hope. Mm, not likely. Be a lot of new kids on the block in Edmonton, don't you think? Next year, who's yeah. Brandon McMillan trying to get loose? Horvat centering, return pass, backhander can't make, get it in. I think Horvat was surprised that Hanson gave him the puck back. Was he ever? He's being too generous and not selfish enough. He had an empty net, in my opinion. It's one of those that you overthought it. And you're right, it surprised Horvat. I'm sure they'll have a little bit of a chat as they get back to the bench. Turnover in the neutral zone, battle for a loose puck. Errant pass, and oh, he had Scrivens already yeah. down on his knees and out. Watch Scrivens bites across, he's falling forward, and Horvat just can't control it. He actually let up on it, and <laughs> there's your reaction after missing the open net. And Yannick Hansen raised the puck at all from there, it's in the net. There'd be a little more consternation if this was the night they had to win to make the playoffs. But that job is already taken care of. Barrett Dorsett, Ronnie Kennings, and Lyndon Vay playing together now. Canucks are 21, 12, and 2 since they called up Kennings. Vay in front of the net. Dorsett whacking at the puck. And that'll draw a crowd. Coming up Tuesday night, Rick meets up with Jan Arden in Edmonton. Watch the Rick Mercer Report Tuesday at 8 on CBC. Jim, you bring up a good point. Kennens has fit in extremely well in this lineup that's a real energy line. And as the Canucks, if they are getting healthy going forward, those are some tough decisions, aren't they, for the coaching staff and management. If you all of a sudden get Richardson, Matthias, and Cassian back, who comes out of the lineup? And that's something that Every good team has to have a player or two that probably should be in the lineup not playing come playoff time. Kennis has been taken out of the lineup a couple of times, I think, just to remind him what got him yeah. here. Keep that energy up, right? You can't take a shift back. Continue to be the Latvian locomotive, and you'll stay in the lineup. Anton Lander straight up the middle. Justin Schultz takes a shot that went off a skate and wide of the net. Here comes Kleffbaum to hold the puck in for Lander. Yannick Weber knocked the puck loose. Schultz comes in deep. <laughs> Got a chance they're going to stop the play here, guys. So move along. They, they could spend seven minutes there if they want. I think the officials. Keep them rolling as well. Oilers won the battle and get the puck. Clefbaum takes the shot and he just missed it in. Schultz with a shot that went off a shin guard and wide. Matt Fraser tried to cycle the puck in the corner and the Canucks got it back. Henrik to Daniel. And look at that. How did he find Henrik with that little back pass? And the Canucks went offside. It's been a rough night for Derek Dorsett. He left with what appeared to be a shoulder stinger. And then in this scrum, looks like he got knocked in the head or the eye. Yeah, well, immediately grabbing his eye, and he's getting a few discussion with the official, wanting to get a penalty, didn't get it. Lost a helmet earlier on on a hit. Went off to the dressing room after the shoulder hurt, and then a little more attention on the bench. And well, it's not been, even the playoffs. Yeah, I know he's got a good playoff look, but they might yeah. want to just take him out of the lineup if it's going to be that kind of an Send unlucky him away night. For the night. Flames got through. It seemed uh, unscathed today in their loss in Winnipeg, which seemed like a game between St. John's and Adirondack, but there were a few more NHL players in the Winnipeg lineup. A lot of days off for Calgary players. And, uh, and around the league, for that matter. That happened a lot today. There were a lot of funny games today, too. There was a lot of games without intensity, and it just seems that for NHL players, 
once you've actually clinched the playoff spot, it's really hard to play for a seed. For a spot. Yeah. And the amount of energy that think of those teams that are down the stretch having to win every night like Ottawa was like they, or pardon me like Calgary was down the stretch in Winnipeg can't help but have a little bit of a uh, relaxing breath afterwards took 98 points to get a wild card spot That's how tough this league is and how far Edmonton has to go yeah you're looking for Edmonton going forward next year who are you going to beat to be in the playoff spot we got the Los Angeles Kings who didn't make it. Dallas, who had a tough start, they didn't make it. They're out of the mix, and it just becomes really evident how far you have to go to be a real playoff team. Matt Fraser's in after the puck. He's got Tyler Pitlick with him. There's the centering pass. Lander to Pitlick. It was intercepted and back the other way comes Derek Dorsett. Lyndon Bay. Kennens goes to the front of the net. Now in behind it to get a hold of the puck. Dorsett, hard centering pass. Lyndon Bay had a whack at it. Lander cleared it before he could get there. Danik Weber into the crowd. There's a loose puck. Dorsett can't find it, can't get a hold of it. And Pitnick is able to clear the puck for Edmonton. Ryan Stanton to Ronnie Kennens. Vancouver begins to change. Sedin's come over the boards again. Oscar Clefbaum. The shoot him. Miller played that. Purcell kept the puck here. Derek Roy has Yakupov with him. Nifty play by Yakupov off the back of the net. Still with the puck, turns and shoots a ricochet. Purcell in front. Roy had it poked away from him before he could shoot the puck. And here come the Sedins to center. Henrik to Daniel. Burles goes to the front of the net. The pass comes to Alex Edler. Takes the shot. Hit a body in front of the net. Burrows back to the blue line. Daniel slap pass tip. Scrivens had no idea where the puck was after he stopped it and it was knocked wide of the net. Burrows. Henrik. Daniel. For Burrows in front pass didn't get through. Henrik's got the puck. Neat little play to Daniel. Around to Alex Burrows. Henrik let the puck go. Daniel takes it. Henrik for Burrows. The pass was there, too. He set his stick tied up in a good defensive play by David Musil. Burrows knocks the puck loose. Off the wing, and a save. Rebound. Alex Burrows for Daniel. And his stick lifted. Oh, so close for the Sedins. Here again as Vancouver tries to forge ahead in the game. And what magic from the Sedins. Here they come again. Daniel shoots. He hit the post. Post it out, and they had it. And what a roar there would have been had the Sedins at the end of this magical shift finished it, and they still might. But now they're out of gas, and the puck is cleared. Now what a challenge for Martin Morenzi and David Musil. Not many shifts like that in the American Hockey League, but they survived it. That brought the fans, many of them, to their feet here. One of the last shifts of the game for the Sedins serves notice they're ready for the playoffs. Took the puck and Vancouver's just offside. What a shift for Henrik and Daniel. They just failed to score. Oh, Danny boy, the pipes, the pipes were calling. Oh, we saw about 45 seconds of the finest from Alex Burroughs and the Sedin twins. They just didn't, couldn't quite finish it. No, a nice read by Burroughs. Tries to get it across scene to Daniel Sedin. Nice job of Teddy Purcell coming back. How many times you've seen this backhand saucer Henrik to Daniel and off the post off of what was a long extended shift with a lot of great plays around the net and the Oilers able to hang on. Under three minutes to go third period. Then while Pouliot lost control of the puck Sven Berchi. Can he get three tonight and finish this for Vancouver? Here's Lucas Spisa. Schultz is back. Jordan Everly. Taylor Hall. 
Next to his forehand has a good look and turns back, regrouping. Vancouver's changing. And Hall wants to do the same thing, so he just dumps the puck in on Miller. McMillan with a tip at center. There's no icing on this play. And Davidson is back. Martin Marinson. Tyler Pitlick and out to center. Ryan Stanton to Brandon McMillan. It's by Lander. Moves in on Davidson. Trying to tuck the puck in. Here's Hansen. Pass at the side of the net for Horvath. Yannick just won't shoot tonight. Uh, that was a good play by Davidson, too. He lost his man and didn't bother going with the puck. Went to the side of the net and boxed out and maybe saved the goal there. The pass was for Horvat and he was tied up. And the orders have the puck at center of a wide pass. David Musil. Born in Delta near Vancouver. Played for the Vancouver Giants. Calls Edmonton home. Pouliot stripped to the puck by Ronnie Kennens. You seal up the middle. Jordan Eberle. Back down by Derek Dorsett. Here's a quick shot and a nice save by Ryan Miller. Off Pouliot who could have ended it right there in the last minute of the third period. Dorsett in deep. Keith Alley is back. Punched against the boards. Uh, Dorsett got a slight measure of revenge for earlier tonight. Purcell chases after the puck. Lucas Spisa gets there first and he wheels up to center. Nice backhand pass to Burroughs. Henrik couldn't get a hold of the puck and it's thrown back to center. Spisa to his partner Kevin Bieksa. Burroughs rink wide. Here's Henrik Sedin to Daniel. Burroughs hovering over on the other side of the ice. Well, there's not wanting another shift like the last one for the Sedins trying desperately to get the puck and Justin Schultz has it. The Yakupov time runs out. This game will go to overtime. Yannick Hansen and Sven Berchi scored in the third period to tie the game 5-5 and sudden death overtime is next in the final game of the season. We are going to overtime here in Vancouver, but before that, we have a Budweiser red light scoreboard. Ottawa wins. They're in the playoffs. Calgary loses to Winnipeg. Montreal wins in Toronto. How about no Boston and no L.A. guys in the Stanley Cup playoffs? It is different, and it's a wide open race for the Stanley Cup. Four on four, sudden death overtime here in the last game of the season for the Edmonton Oilers, team that's used 43 different players this season. And will miss the playoffs for the ninth consecutive season. Another summer of change in all likelihood is soon upon them. Vancouver headed to the playoffs and Henrik Sedin trying to end this as he's headed for the net. He tried a nifty play to Chris Tanev who fell in the corner. It's a four on two Edmonton rush. Taylor Hall to Pouliot broken up. Could be a breakaway for Tanev. He couldn't get the puck. This is a pretty wild overtime. I guess they want to end it in a hurry. Here comes Taylor Hall, and he's just offside. That was a pretty crazy first 50 seconds of overtime. Well, Tanev was coming back in a hurry because it was an odd man rush the other way, but the wheels of Justin Schultz, because Tanev couldn't track that puck down, and this was a tight call at the other end as Taylor Hall felt that he wasn't offside, but the call said he was. Derek Roy won the face off. Oscar Kleffbaum has the puck. Roy just touched the puck at center. Spiza from Bieksa. Benino and Verbata up front. A backhand pass to Kevin Bieksa. He's into the attacking zone. He's got one tonight. Tried to keep that puck away from Kleffbaum and couldn't do it. Derek Roy leads Edmonton to center. Got Yakupov with him, headed for the front of the net. Teddy Purcell's there, three forwards, and cleft bomb the defenseman. There's a nice play. Teddy Purcell shoots. Miller makes the save, and he hangs on and stops Purcell from ending the game. A couple of good saves to end the end of regulation on Ryan Miller. You saw the one on Pouliot that he looked very calm and composed. Here's another one that he didn't waver. He was looking 
Teddy Purcell was hoping for him to bite early and maybe find a hole. Thought that Miller did a nice job there of standing his ground, gave him five hole, took it away quickly. Six weeks away, you're forgiven if it takes a while to get your Absolutely. rhythm back in goal. Looks a lot more comfortable now than, especially the two quick goals early rattled him a little bit. Here's Matt Fraser with a sharp angled shot, and Miller got his shoulder up to stop that. Alex Burrows. Breakout pass from Stanton. And the Oilers get the puck back in the neutral zone. In comes Pitlick, shoveled the puck over to Matt Fraser's side of the net. He never really could get control, but Miller does, and he smothers the puck. Another play by Miller just showing his calmness and composure. He uh, mentioned, Jim, the save he made with his shoulder earlier on. Here's another one that the rebound, he just tracked it very well. No overreaction, efficiency in movement. Found it off the back of his defenseman Weber and able to hold on. He looks a lot more comfortable here to finish off the game. Henrik Sedin went straight ahead off the draw. Set play in all likelihood and he sprung Daniel. Who's in over the blue line with the puck. Chris Tanev keeps his head up trying to get away from Eberle. Leaves the puck for Henrik. He got away from Eberle but couldn't get away from Schultz who took the puck. Taylor Hall, that would have sent Everly in, but it was intercepted by Henrik. He gave the puck away. Pouliot shoots! Ripped it just wide of the net. Here's a chance for a two-on-one. Daniel Sedin with Alex Edler on Schultz. Daniel for Edler scores! Three goal comeback for the Vancouver Canucks and they finish off the season with a 6-5 win over Edmonton. Well, as you see so often, a chance at one end and here's a read by Pouliot. He gets aggressive with the pinch. He's already got a defenseman in and it seems like the story of the night, Jim, pass and don't shoot as Daniel Sedin in all alone. Schultz trying to take the pass away and almost an impossible angle there for Edler. I think by the time that Edler actually shot the puck. He was almost past the goal line. Daniel Sedin not thinking shot. And yeah, right along the goal line off the right skate of Ben Scrivens and in the back of the net. Vancouver with another win over Edmonton. A meaningless game tonight, but the meaningful games come midweek. And the Vancouver Canucks will go into the playoffs and start against their arch rivals from Calgary. The Oilers' season has come to an end. Here are the three stars of a 6-5 Vancouver win. Alex Edler, the third star, got the game-winning goal, a three-point night for Benoit Pouliot, and Sven Berchi with his first two goals as a Vancouver Canuck, as the Canucks pull this one out 6-5. So we're ready to go, Canada. Five chances for a first cup in 22 years, including Vancouver and Calgary, who will start in the West midweek on Hockey Night in Canada.